Hi, I'm Mila, and I'm a high school sophomore. Let me tell you about Carly, a female student who recently got transferred to our class. This new girl has always been pretty weird. From the very first day, she made a strong impression on the whole class with her jet black outfit covering her from head to toe. To me, Carly has always been quite a mystery, and I've never felt completely comfortable around her. She would always lower her face and stare at the ground, be it in class or in the corridors, as if she wanted to distinguish herself from everyone. Carly also didn't speak to anyone, save for me, since we were sitting next to each other in class. Carly seemed to trust me, at least I think so. She had a beautiful face, and her steel blue eyes were just as hypnotizing as the dark lipstick she used to wear. She looked like a gothic rock star and made heads turn wherever she would go. Once, Carly told me she was afraid of light, protesting that it would hurt her and burn her skin. This immediately reminded me of vampires and of Dracula, who are notorious light haters. But I just thought Carly had some sort of OCD or typical teenage obsession, not that she was a vampire. One weekend, Carly suggested we hang out together, and I gladly accepted. We went to the mall in the morning and planned on having lunch at the town's best barbecue joint. It was an Asian grill-it-yourself type of barbecue restaurant, where diners grill their meats themselves at the table. This makes for a fun, delicious and interactive meal, sure to please everyone. We ordered a mixed combo and when the waiter brought up to our plate our various raw meats, Carly explained, These meats look so fresh and juicy. I totally agreed with her and as such didn't think much of her enthusiasm. But as soon as the waiter left our table, having ensured we were all set to start grilling, Carly threw her arm towards the meat plate and poked into a large strip of raw sirloin. She shoved it into her mouth that I had never seen so wide open before. Her powerful jaw and sharp teeth were quick to chew the delicious flesh, blood trickling down her chin. Eyes semi-closed, she repeated this routine without interruption until the whole plate had been devoured. She seemed to be in a trance, so much that all the patrons witnessing the scene, me included, were both mesmerized and on the verge of throwing up. I tried interrupting her, pointing out that her bizarre ritual was unsettling and embarrassing, but she didn't seem to care or even hear me. I had managed to save a couple of pieces of meat and proceeded to cook them on my side of the central grill. In all honesty, I feared she would devour them just as she had the rest of the plate, but instead of staring at them greedily, She was actually looking at me intently. Following this awkward meal, Carly asked me to come to her house to help her out with her homework. For some weird reason, I immediately agreed to, without a single hesitation. That said, I instinctively took my phone and texted Jonathan that I was at Carly's, asking him to come over ASAP. Carly's house was located on a street not far from us. She opened the door, telling me that her parents were gone for the day so they wouldn't bother us. I followed her silently inside and couldn't believe what I saw. It was pitch dark with absolutely no light. All the windows were covered with black curtains and my eyes had a hard time getting accustomed to the darkness. Carly took off her thick black coat and hung it on the wrought iron coat rack next to the entrance door. I was seeing more clearly now and was busy looking around this strange and sinister place. But suddenly Carly attacked me. She gripped my shoulders and violently bit my neck. I struggled and kicked Carly's lower legs to escape. I rushed to the door but was horrified to realize that it was locked. As I turned around, Carly was standing in front of me with an evil smirk. Was she indeed a bloodthirsty vampire? Carly's bite had begun to bleed and I could feel the warm blood trickling down my neck. Carly was very strong and she grabbed me in a snap, forcing me to lie down on the living room floor before biting me once again. I screamed so hard but my lungs and eardrums nearly popped. I could very clearly feel every single blood vessel out of my body flowing toward my neck into Carly's mouth. She was sucking my blood and she was sucking me dry. Suddenly, I heard the sound of the front door being smashed. I then saw Jonathan rush in towards me, followed by Mr. Carson, our homeroom teacher. They jumped at Carly and pulled her away from me. I was hysterical and burst into tears as Jonathan was trying to comfort me. 
Realizing she was in big trouble, Carly panicked and tried running away, but she was held back by Mr. Carson. I found out that Jonathan had gone to see him when he received my text message saying that I was alone with Carly at her place. Jonathan had always found Carly to be strange and wanted our homeroom teacher's advice as to what to do. Mr. Carson was aware of her case and tried to reassure me. It turned out that Carly was not a real vampire and that she suffered from clinical vampirism, otherwise known as Renfield syndrome. As such, she was afraid of light and consumed blood in various forms. Carly's medical record was on her file, so my homeroom teacher was very worried. I was extremely lucky that both of them arrived in time. Had they not, I'm not sure I would be here to tell you my story.